Hello, welcome back to Fire Hazard's Gaming. My name is Ben, and Sarah can see on with Ever17. So last time out, we had a whole bunch more conversations with you that kind of didn't really go anywhere. I don't know, they're kind of confusing. So yeah, let's uh, pick it up um, the next morning, apparently. The next morning, everybody slept in. It looked like everyone was pretty beat. When you and I saw each other, we exchanged good mornings as if everything were normal. It seemed like she wanted to act as if things were the same as always in front of everybody else. So, I did my best to follow suit. Sleepy and made breakfast later than usual. Sora had put in a request and we were going to have another picnic. She really seemed to enjoy them. We spread out the same Yumian blanket near the rest area. I went to go check on the trap that we had set the night before while everyone was preparing, just in case we caught something. But just as I got to where we'd set it, I saw Takashi breaking down the trap. Uh huh, cleaning it up? Takashi nodded silently, meaning that. Takashi's shoulders slumped and he let out a big sigh. He looked so pathetic, and I couldn't say anything else. Okay, whatever that means. Uh, when we had finally gotten everything ready, Scooby appeared out of nowhere. She again plopped herself down on the sheet and started munching away. I didn't know if Takashi had matured overnight, but he held his tongue, though it was clear he was in a sulky mood. Sarah and Scooby didn't look at each other, and it seemed like they were ignoring each other. Apparently, they still weren't getting along. But everybody tried to make the best of it, eating, chatting, and having fun. Knock, paper, scissors. Ready? Go! Ah, lost again. <laughs> oh, kid, you're terrible at this. What is it, 16 losses in a row? Ugh, weird. You're too nice. You have to just throw out your feel. Rock, paper, or scissors. Yes, the global type. If I'm not, I'm trying to win. Rock, paper, scissors, ready, go! Ah, dang it! I just kept losing. Could be that with your amnesia, your ability to make decisions isn't so good right now. You don't get too caught up in trivia things you can't control. You need to be strong, wake up your own mind, or else you're just someone following everybody else. Yeah, I know. That being as it is... <laughs> Time for the loser's penalty. Hand up your sandwich. Silently, I held out my sandwich. Ready. She squeezed a ton of mustard onto my sandwich. The penalty was mustard. My sandwich was already drenched in the stuff. My mouth felt like it was on fire before I even took a bite. Maybe thanks to that exchange, I was able to get through the whole thing without thinking about it too much. Suddenly, someone cut across my field of vision, and it was Sugumi. Sugumi was walking toward Takashi. She extended her hand. Huh? Uh, what's with the hand? <laughs> You're like a dog. Shake, girl. And you probably say, don't make fun of me. You're really dumb, you know that? Are you trying to say that you want to know the helping? Sugumi nodded at Sora's extra explanation. She had already wolfed down her first one. <laughs> You've got a lot of nerve. You only show your face at mealtime, now you're demanding seconds? Well, I suppose. So, do you have more or not? I do. I thought you might want more, so I made a special one for you. Special? I had a bad feeling about the whole thing. Eat this. No leftovers. Skimmy took the sandwich without saying anything. Takshi stared at Skimmy. She took the wrapper off the sandwich. 
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. It's just you're so beautiful. I can't take my eyes off you, even when you're just removing a sandwich wrapper. <laughs> yes, stupidity is chairman. <laughs> Maybe if you died 50 times, it would help. I thought talks should get angry. But he was just grinning as he watched Scooby start in on our sandwich. Something was definitely not right here. I sucked my breath and watched. Scooby bit into the sandwich. Munch, chomp, chew. <laughs> Apparently, all that meant was ha 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 ha. It's got quite a flavor, huh? That sandwich. <laughs> Sakeshi laughed so hard he cried. It's packed with mustard, Tabasco, pepper, sage, nutmeg, cinnamon, mint, and a dose of curry powder. For good measure, I had a dose of mayonnaise, ketchup, sugar, salt, soy sauce, vinegar, and vanilla. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, I, I forget it. Anyway, I threw in every ingredient and spice I could find, so I see 34 ingredient sauce. <laughs> hey, that's just too cruel. Yeah. That's gone too far, Takshi. Shut up, I'm the cook here. <laughs> Sugumi, I highly recommend inducing vomiting immediately. Get water quickly. No, no, we'll need medicine first. Eh, she'll be fine, she'll get the runs, but she won't die. It's not something you should do to a girl. I went to grab Takashi with my left hand. Uh, wait, I'm fine. Skimmy mumbled this, stopping us. <laughs> well, why aren't you tough? I'm perfectly fine. But it still tastes terrible, right? Right? Tell the truth. I'm totally fine. It tastes kind of like pizza. There's something wrong with this girl's taste buds. What? What did you say? What's it taste like? Pizza. Are you serious? Sugumi nodded. <laughs> she just keeps eating it. Hey, that, let, let me see that. That can't be. Sakshi went to grab a sandwich, but Skimmy is too quick for him. Not only that, Sakshi caught his foot on, uh, caught his foot and fell to the floor. And in that instant, Skimmy polished off the sandwich. Thanks for the sandwich. You made it especially for me, right? So the event ended with Scooby trading the tables with Takshi. Looking really coy and creepy at the same time. I ended up cleaning the area up afterward. I separated the cans and sand trappers with them in garbage bags. You and Sarah helped. Takshi said he was going to start getting ready for lunch, then it's in the kiosk. Sora said she had to do some maintenance on Lemmy and left the control room. Skimmy disappeared to it somewhere unknown. But something happened when I was picking up garbage. Hello there! Huh? What? What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, that was not you. Coco, maybe? We haven't seen her since the beginning. Did somebody just call out? What? Nobody said anything. 
Really? <laughs> Let's just move my imagination. I'll bet you're just trying to find a way to get out of helping. I'm not. It's not that at all. Are you hearing you miss your voices again? Well, I... Yeah, please don't do that again. Get a hold of yourself already. I know you're tired, but... We need to start picking up garbage again. When we finally finish with the trash, fold the blanket, and we're done cleaning up. Now we'll just sweep the area. Mayo, can you do me a favor and get me a broom and dustpan? I think they're for kiosk. Roger, Roger that. Sarah set out for the kiosk. I was just thinking, this must be a nightmare for the people that clean this place. It would be if people had to it. But let me usually use a cleaning robot that automatically cleans the whole complex. <laughs> wow. Well, with the accident now, I imagine the robots that brushed up out of junk mouth by the ocean right about now. <laughs> I'll bet. Alright, that's totally Coco. What? I, I was your voices again. Yeah, thinking about it, I guess even me was just one pass a massive pile of scrap metal. And I suppose it's just a matter of how it's destroyed. Yeah, seriously, why are they bothering to clean? This place is gonna like implode in like what, two days or whatever? What's what's the point? What what's the matter? Uh you're not not again. Oh, alright, you've done enough. Just go to the infirmary and somewhere to rest. You got a serious condition of something. I was sure I'd heard something. This time, I was sure it wasn't my imagination. I'm carving! Can't you see I'm carving? See, I really can hear something. I'm etching some marks into this stone. Stone statue? I looked around the four stone statues at the edge of the open area, and there... At the top of the pedestal of the stone statue was a girl. Maybe it's totally Coco. She was standing there next to figures of clean and statue. Oh, it's that girl. It's the one that I had seen and who'd vanished. Uh, and then had vanished on the first. Look, you, right there. Mm -hmm. Huh? Look, over on that statue. <laughs> what about the statue? Look, it's some statue. There's a girl there. See? Huh? I don't see anybody. Not there, over there. Ah, forget it. I'll go call to her. But kid! I sprinted towards the stone statue. What could the girl be doing up there? Well, it's because... I was feeling lonesome. Lonesome? Anyway, I was... Sad. Sad? What's she talking about? And next. <laughs> ah. Just then, the girl lost her balance, falling from her awkward place on the pedestal. Look out! I ran toward her. The water caught on my feet and sprayed everywhere as I ran all out to where she was. Will I make it? I closed my eyes, mustered all my power, and sprinted. I threw out my free left hand to where the girl would be falling to catch her. I didn't feel anything, but maybe I hadn't reached her in time. Scared, I opened my eyes. What? There was no one in my arms, or even around me. Only the water sloshing around gently, uh, sloshing about gently around me. 
Yeah, hey, are you alright? Looks like you took a pretty nasty spill. I looked above me. Of course there's no one on the pedestal, pedestal supporting the statue. Without saying anything, I got up and went behind the statue. There were scratches in the statue. There were deep notches that looked like they had been carved there by something hard and sharp. And they were the shape of people. Really simple looking, uh, sick people. At the end of each stick was a little round face. There's six in all. When looking closer, I saw that next to the people figures were two carvings of animals that I had never seen. I looked up at the statue. The statue was pointing diagonal and up, toward the east. What are you two doing? That's a good question. I ignored them and gently touched the carvings on the statue. Without thinking, I blurted it out. Watch your step, okay? Okay. That answer could have been my imagination that time. Interesting, okay. I know Coco's real because we saw her at the very beginning. Or at least she should be real. I don't know. Maybe she's a weird Sora like thing and the kid's the only one who can uh, see her right now? I don't know. This will find out eventually, maybe. After that, I decided to go to the infirmary and sleep. It wasn't that I was feeling ill, it was simply that I was not getting enough sleep. I wanted to get some quality rest. I slept so deeply that I didn't even dream. When I awoke, it was already around evening. There was a memo by the bed. We will be in the conference room until dinner. If you wake up by then, please come along. I'm sorry for making you hang out for the last couple days. Please make sure that you get enough rest. Yeah. Judging from the signature, it seemed that you had left it. I got out of bed, stretched, and left the room. I started walking in the direction opposite of the conference room. I decided to take a walk around the complex for fun. I got into I. I thought that it might make for a good change of pace to walk around the floor I hadn't spent much time on. That was my thinking. I got off on the flooded third floor. I wondered where I should go. I looked around, thinking. It was then that it happened. I saw the girl again. Oh. I saw a small figure cutting across the corridor. I was sure of it. It was that girl. I chased after her. Her skirt shook back and forth. She walked further and further away. It was almost as if she was trying to get away from me. Hey, wait a minute. She might not have heard me, and she didn't show any signs of stopping. I wondered what it was all about. This girl that kept appearing out of nowhere and then disappearing. This girl that didn't register on Lenny's bioscan. No, she had registered once. Life reading 7. But the more I thought about it, the stranger everything seemed. She only appeared in front of me and we hardly communicated. Well, I couldn't worry about it. I knew it wouldn't help. It was something I could only solve by asking her directly. She headed into the cosmic whale room. I followed in soon after. The room was dimly lit. A massive whale floated like a majestic phantasm in the cosmic room. The girl was in the middle of the room. She was facing away from me, sitting and hugging her knees. Ah, I finally caught up. I approached her as I caught my breath. I heard singing. It sounded like phrases from a children's song. She's done. Many sprites show the view of above. Waiting inside a dream. I felt like I had heard the lyrics somewhere before. Somewhere, I was sure. In the distant, distant past. I wonder if it was my missing memory that was making me feel that way. Hey, you. Her shoulders jumped with shock, and she stopped singing. Slowly, she turned back to look at me. It was the girl, after all. Why did she run away from me? Ah, oh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. It really did matter to me, but since I'd finally be able to confront the girl, I felt the surge of relief. Well, why don't we go where everyone else is? I held up my hand as I said this. 
Finally, she stood up and spoke. Brother? What? The girl just stared at my face. L let's go. I took her hand and tugged it as I began to walk. The inside of my mind was churning. It was because of what she just said. Inside of me, it felt like another me was screaming. That was how I felt. Ah, I found another girl. I burst into the conference room as I shouted this. But of course, I was still leading the girl by the hand. And everyone turned to look at me at once. Huh? Another what? Uh, who are you talking about? Are you talking about that girl? Yeah, I found her in the cosmic world and brought her here. Except there's nobody there. What's the matter with everyone? Why aren't you surprised? Maybe you'd better rest for a while. What? <laughs> the girl was tugging my sleeve. I turned to look at her. But... The girl that I brought back was... <laughs> Even better. What are you doing checking with me all of a sudden? Sarah? I look back at everyone. This isn't right. I swear, I saw her. We were walking here hand in hand. It wasn't Sarah. Is that right, Sarah? No, I didn't see anybody else. Then can't you suddenly grab my hand? What? Sarah, why are you lying? Huh? What are you talking about? You're the one that's lying. What? The girl was in the whale room. She was sitting down, hugging her knees. She was singing some kind of phrases to a kid's song. I'm telling you, that was me. Sarah was red faced and shouting. You don't have to tell everyone about it. Jeez, what's with her? What's going on here? Oh my. You groan as she slapped her forehead with her hand. Kid, just forget about everything else and get some rest. I'll bring you some dinner later. Oh, what is going on with this guy? I thought about a lot of things that plotted to the infirmary. Things leading to that point, things to come, the odd things going on. Things I couldn't figure out, things I needed to figure out, things I needed to decide. Everything I had been trying to avoid thinking about all rushed into my mind at once, making it a confused mess. I couldn't help thinking and worrying about things. About you. And what if the man who died 34 years before wasn't you's father? Then who was a real father? Was the woman that died 15 years before really you's mother? If not, then who was? About me. Why did I keep having premonitions of the future? What did it mean? Who's the girl? Why did I mistaken Sarah for her? Why did I even lost my memory in the first place? What happened to me in my past? What did Sagumi know about all of this? And why were we all trapped in the Mew? Was it just an accident or something else? Perfect. All right. Well, it's a little bit short, but that feels like a perfect place to end it for today. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.